Ah, uh, yes. It's time. This year, and by that I mean 2018, was a great year of anime. There's just so many shows I liked. But more than that, so many different types of shows. But let's get on to the list itself because that's the reason you're here, not for just my rants. As with my past two years of doing this, I'm going to go through everything that I tried from the year. The shows I dropped being lower on the list and the shows I finished being higher. The shows I dropped are ranked according to how far I got them and then by how much I liked them. So let's do this. Number 75. Pop Team Epic. This was an unfunny comedy. No story, no characters to get invested in, and just really boring. Yeah, I guess a couple of gags were kind of amusing, but that was just a very short-lived amusement. Now, this isn't enough to be deserving of last place, as there are a lot of other boring shows I dropped, which we'll get to soon. But the reason it's last place is because the episode was twice as long as it needed to be. They just repeated the episode with different voices, so it felt like I was really wasting my time. So that dropped its score by half of what it already was, leaving it with the lowest score of anything from the year I tried. So, moving on to something less pointless. Number 74, Conception. Well, I guess it has a point for some people. It pretended to be a standard isekai plot for a little bit, but then basically the main guy has to have sex with all these girls, and that's the whole concept of the show. It's basically pure trash, and it felt like it would have made more sense as a just hentai actually show that, make it into a porn. So, number 68 through 73 are all just boring shows I dropped, and I have nothing to say beyond that. They are Uma Musume Pretty Derby, Josh and Dropkick, Karake or Karakai Jozu no Taigai-san, Homes of Tokyo, Omori wa Madagumo wo Shinari, and Sword Guy the Animation. Nothing more to say about those. Number 67 is Gaku and Babysitters. This is a cute show about babysitting, though it does slightly more than the others. It was kind of cute, and I was kind of interested in the main guy's story, but not enough to make me want to watch more. Number 66 is Sword Art Alternative Gun Guild Online. Again, first episode was mostly boring, though some cool action made it a kind of little bit of fun. Though there was nothing story-wise after an episode, so easy drop there. Number 65 is That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime. A little bit of fun comedy here, but again, mostly boring and uninteresting, so dropped it after an episode. Number 64 is Sora to Umi no Aida. This is a show about girls who go to space to fish. This is a stupid idea, but it could have been the fun type of stupid. And it was for a little bit, but then they had some forced drama about gender equality. And then they had mechanics from a game they sh- threw in without any logic behind it. So the fun went away and no interesting story. So again, easy drop. Number 63 is Angle Moist Record of Mongol Invasion, a boring historical samurai show. I don't really know why, but I have trouble getting into historical anime here, so dropped it early. Number 62 is Golden Kamori, another historical anime I found boring. And while I did hear it was a lot of fun, and maybe it is later, this first episode gave me no reason to watch it. And because I have a lot of shows I do want to watch, I'm not going to keep sticking with this. Number 61 is the new Legend of the Galactic Heroes uh, series. This one had a few things in the first episode I liked, but is very much a slow start, and that episode did not get me excited to watch more, so I might as well just go watch the original, which I might get to someday. Number 60 is How Not to Summon a Demon Lord, which is a mostly dull start. Some fun, though, but to be honest, I've pretty much completely forgotten about it, so if it wasn't good enough to leave an impression, why would I want to watch more? Number 59 is Gigage no Kitaro. A mostly boring kids show. There's something near the end that looked kind of interesting, but that wasn't enough for me to want to continue it. Number 58 is Hanbado. An okay show about badminton, but as I was watching the second episode, I realized I was just watching it to watch it because I hadn't dropped it, not because of anything interesting about it. So yeah, why bother with more of that? Number 57 is Dances with Dragons. Again, mostly boring, though some interesting parts, but I won't say this is bad, but it's like, I have so many shows I want to watch, limited time, so why watch something which is so meh at the start, especially when the critical reception was not good. 
Number 56 is Suere, a boring and cliche show about an archery club. It feels like the show that I've seen so many times about characters in a club that competes and they have backstories and all that. Yeah, so no reason to want to watch more. Number 55 is Angels of Death. Interesting concept with the whole uh, death game sort of thing. But then I had no connection to the characters, so much so that I was just waiting for episode 2 to end so I could drop it. Number 54 is Cells at Work. An okay comedy that shows the life within a body. Not bad, but I'm not going to stick with something to the end if it's just an okay comedy. Yeah, you'll notice this is a very common trend throughout the shows I dropped. Number 53 is Idolish 7. An idol show that definitely has its fan base. <laughs> A fan base that got me to try it, despite me not going to otherwise. But as I was getting further along, I realized that I'd seen these tropes before, and they weren't done in an interesting or unique way. So it's like, why bother? I've seen Love Live. The characters are kind of interesting, but not really much beyond the first episode there. So when I reached episode 3, I was like, I have no interest in these characters or show. So yeah, ended it there. Number 52 is Tina Matsuri. Again, an unfunny comedy. A lot of people like it, but the humor just doesn't work for me, and there isn't really a story to stand apart from the humor, so dropped it after episode 3. Number 51 is Goblin Slayer. It had a very memorable first episode, but then the next two felt rather flat. There wasn't much of a story, characters mostly uninteresting, so boring episode, or boring show. So dropped it there. Number 50 is Release the Spice. Yes, again, a boring show, but this time about spies. And spice. It felt like it could have been one of those cool blends between action and slice of life, but then the action parts felt lame and the slice of life was pretty dull, so I had trouble wanting to watch more. Number 49 is Space Battleship uh, Tiramisu. A short comedy which was funny at first, but then stopped being funny. And if a comedy isn't funny, why watch more? Number 48 is Be the Beginning. A show I actually kind of forgot what happened. But there's action and conflict, and then I didn't care, so I dropped it after... How many episodes was it? Four? Three? One of those two. Number 47 is Double Decker, Doug, and Krill. It started off as a very fun show about a police unit in a world filled with drugs that increased people's power, but then it lost its fun appeal after the third episode, and I, when I'm watching it for fun and it's not fun, I'm not really interested in watching more. Number 46 is Citrus. I don't think I need to explain why I dropped this one. Though maybe I should explain why I watched four episodes before I did. Well, the trash parts were kind of fun, but then it just became boring and stupid, and not in a good type of stupid. So yeah. Number 45, Magoa Box. A boring and cliche and, quite frankly, stupid sports anime. It tried to stand out, but it was still an underdog sports anime, though with a retro style. But retro is a turn off for me. I don't like retro. Then it tried to raise the stakes with darker parts of society and all that, but it really just came across as edgy. And I'm someone who's normally not bothered by this. I ended up giving this one a second try after everyone liked it. But then as I was watching it, it just felt like I was watching it because I had to watch it because people told me to, not because I liked it any myself. And I'd say after four episodes, that's enough for me to move on to something else. Number 44 is Piano No Mori, also known as Forest of Piano. This show started off looking like it could be an interesting story about friendship and music, but then they were really pushing the music more and felt kind of like another just club competition anime. And that made it lose the big friendship part, making it just a typical cliche show. Though the sport being the piano, and I really did not have any interest in the characters playing the piano, as opposed to the characters themselves. So drop this one, despite the fact that I liked it quite a bit at the start. Number 43 is Tokyo Ghoul Re. There are so many things going on here that I just didn't care about, well, any of it. Well, I guess I did kind of care about Kaneki and his story and what happened, but beyond that, no. Plus, with the critical reception scene, it kept getting worse. Well, if I was on the fence anyway, and everyone says it's going to be bad, then I think I'm okay being done. Number 42 is Aiko Incarnation. This was, again, an okay sci-fi action show, but only okay. And I want something more than okay when I have a lot of things I want to watch. So yeah, drop this. Number 41 is Violet Evergarden. Interesting concept with Violet and her learning about society, and some cool animation at times. But then the episodic stories fell flat, and even the ones that were supposed to be really emotional just 
weren't. So yeah, six episodes was enough to realize that it wasn't going to go anywhere interesting for me. Number 40 is Card Capture Sakura Clear Card. I liked Card Capture Sakura a lot as a kid, but this is a case of a new adaptation not growing up with a fan base. The slice of life parts were dull and the more fantasy action focus just weren't that good. There was some larger plot going on in the background, which I could have enjoyed if they focused on that more, but just felt like they were just taking a very slow step at a time with it and like when only 5% of an episode is good, then yeah, I'm not gonna sit through 24 episodes. Number 39 is Caligula. This is the show that I really should have liked. It had lots of action, a cool concept, very interesting characters, but then it was missing a story to tie it together and beyond a brief focus on the characters, they are just like put in the background. And after eight episodes, I really didn't care about any of them and half the characters I like forgot like why are you important? So I wasn't gonna waste any more time on it. Number 38 is Maho Shoujo Ore. Sadly, an unfunny comedy. It was a show that I thought could be really fun with the absurd concept, but that's all it had. No real story to speak of to give a foundation to the comedy, and then it just wasn't funny, so it lost all appeal for me. Yes, I was wrong about this one. I can admit it. And at number 37 is the last of the shows I dropped, which is The Disastrous Life of Saki K. This is a great comedy. One of the funniest ones I've seen this past year. So you might be wondering why I dropped it. And well, that's because the second season wasn't dubbed. And when I tried the second season subbed, I just couldn't get into it. The dialogue is like so rapid fire and just feels like it lacks all emotion that made me connect to the characters. The first season was great though. And while I could wait for the dub to finish coming out so I can watch the second season, I needed to put it somewhere on the list and I wasn't going to delay the list anymore. So it goes here as a dropped anime. Though I will admit I'll pick it back up if we do get a dub for season two. And that is every show I dropped from last year. Every show I tried, I at least had some reason to think I would like it. And I admit some of them I might have dropped prematurely, but again, there are so many shows I'm interested in. I have a list of 75 here, so why waste it on mediocre shows even if they aren't bad? Plus, I have all the older shows I want to watch, too, and, well, I didn't get into that many this past year. Something I hope to change in 2019, but we'll see. Anyway, off to the ones where I will actually try to say something other than them being boring. So, starting off, we have number 36, Digimon Try. Well, I had lots of things to say about this one, which I did back in my 12 Days video. So go check that out if you want. There was a lot to like about this one, how it sort of recaptured the heart of Digimon from the original, and it tried to push the series in a more mature direction, basically doing everything that Card Captor did not with its new iteration. And yeah, these were really great aspects. But sadly, it couldn't tell the story it wanted to, making the big events feel lackluster or just nonsensical. This is a series made for fans of the original, but after watching it, I feel that they just figure fans would be fine with anything. So, not a terrible show, but definitely the worst of the ones I completed from last year. Then at number 35 is a Bungo Stray Dogs movie. I really enjoyed season 2 of the show, and season 1 wasn't bad. But then, after watching this movie, it just felt rather pointless. Like it was a filler movie they made just to make a movie as opposed to a good iteration to what they were already doing. There were some cool action and character moments, but that's all that stood out to me, so I think I'll just stick to waiting for season 3 now. And at number 34 is another movie, Liz and the Bluebird. This show is hard to judge for me. On the one hand, it has interesting ideas all about friendship and how the characters see each other, holding themselves and each other back because of their need for friendship, but that's just like twisting the idea of friendship. That's interesting. And then there are a lot of cool visual tricks which added to the show. But as I was watching it, I just found it to be extremely boring for like two-thirds of it. It did not take long to figure out th these characters. It's so much the movie felt like it was dragging. And yes, that's part of the mood the show is trying to create, but it was not enjoyable to watch. There were a couple things near the end that I did really appreciate, but it's like a 10 minute payoff for at least 45 minutes of being bored. Is that worthwhile? In my personal opinion, no. Though, to be fair, I've only seen one episode of Hibiki Euphonium, so I'm probably not the audience for this movie. Number 33, Free Season 3, which is sadly another disappointing sequel. 
I like Free quite a bit, especially Season 2 and the High Speed movie. They were able to combine the excitement of sports with interesting character drama, but I feel that Season 3 lost something that the other iterations had. The cast was expanded quite a bit, so it felt like the individual characters did not get much screen time to shine with their new stories, and then a lot of the drama felt rather forced. It wasn't all bad, just not as good as the others, though there were definitely a couple awesome parts. But then I have to knock the show down because it did not even show the final race they were building to all season. Yes, I know they're saying we'll get more in a couple of years, but they can at least wrap up the current arc instead of just leaving it on a cliffhanger for two years. Number 32, Fade Extra. Sadly, the worst of fate at least of the series I've seen. Fate Extra takes place in a virtual world with a lot of things I can't say I understand, and so I was confused quite often, especially with the break between the first part of the season and second part, so yeah. Saber is cool though, and the style was nice, so I won't say it's a terrible show, but definitely on the lower end of the shows from the year, and especially of the Fate franchise. Number 31, Hisone Tomasotan. This is one that had a lot going for it at the start, a fantastical world just filled with wonder, and some seemingly interesting characters, plus like questions about the world. What is going on with these dragons and all that? And well, there were definitely parts I liked, the character drama at a lot of it just did not feel like it worked well. Plus a lot of it, I just did not like the characters. It was different, ideas were cool, but as a show I enjoyed as a whole, not really. So I give it my average rating. Number 30, Devilman Crybaby. Devilman Crybaby took the classic story of Devilman and brought it back to the modern times with a very bold style. I liked how it took the traditional shonen aspects and they went in a more tragic direction with him. It had all these ideas of friendship, love, seeing these ideals challenged, which were really cool. Sadly though, most of the show I didn't like. The first half is mostly episodic and not that interesting, and while it did pick up near the middle and had some really good episodes, the final part just left me feeling nothing. I can appreciate the uniqueness about the end, but it failed to connect with me in any way. I would rather take a cliche story I can connect with than a unique story I feel nothing for. Number 29, Death March, and then there's some words after that that I did not write down. So yeah, speaking of average, we have a standard bland trapped in another world show. I'm actually surprised I made it all the way to the end of this one because it is honestly very unremarkable. More so than the other shows I talked about that I finished because they at least tried to be something new and novel, even if I consider them failing at their goal. Death March, though, is cliche and predictable, but fun. The main character is likable, the animal girls were cute, and I enjoyed seeing the main guy try to make the world he was in a better place. The show I think I could best describe as a palate cleanser, something light and fun to watch after something intense, and considering I watched this right after Steins Gate Zero, well, I needed the show. <laughs> so it served its purpose, and for that, I can't say that I disliked it. Number 28, Real Life Season 2, a conclusion to Real Life Season 1 from like two years ago, and it was okay. The characters got together, grew some, and again, it was okay. Not much to say about it, no big emotional impact, but I did appreciate seeing the story from before wrapped up, so that was good. Number 27, Agretzko. Agretzko is a workplace comedy, and I can definitely relate to it, at least at times. Yes, my boss is a good person, but he sometimes makes me want to scream death metal. <laughs> What I really liked about Agretzka was how she is able to find her place in the workplace and that there are good people she can become friends with even if there are definitely challenges throughout it. Parts of the show did fall a bit flat for me, but all in all it was an enjoyable comedy. Number 26, Hakata Tonkatsu Ramens. This is a show about hitmen and assassins and different organized crime groups and all that, which ended up making for just a cool show, or at least a different one. Though while it was different, is one that just did not feel like it had a lasting impact. Like when I watched it, I liked it, but beyond that, not much to say. Hence why it's not higher on the list. This Number 25, Backstreet Girls. Well, this is probably the most extreme comedy of the year with it being about these guys who are Yakuza and then fail at something so they are forced to undergo gender change surgery and become idols. And then hilarity ensues. Dark hilarity at that. This show did have a lot of funny parts, but then there was like no story to tie it together, making it so when the comedy didn't work, the show was just lame. Most of it was funny though, even if I did wish the guys would catch a break now and then, but that's kind of how this comedy works.
Number 24, Banana Fish. This is a really unique story telling about conflict between like the mafia, gangs in New York, and even the government to some degree. I liked how it had these different conflicts, these back and forth, along with some great suspenseful parts too. And many of the tragedies the characters felt were just really powerful. There were a lot of small problems with the plot though. And while they, none of them were major, they just kept taking me out of the story. Though I did keep coming back though, seeing how the main character was trying to like live life on his own terms, away from the mafia and all that. And while I did like the show in the end, I definitely have some issues with the final part, though that would require me talking about spoilers, so I'll save that for now. Let me know if you want me to talk about it though, that would actually be an interesting topic. Number 23, Zombieland Saga. I do enjoy idol shows from time to time. I also enjoy zombie shows from time to time. I don't think I've ever seen a show that combined those two together, but that's what we get with Zombieland Saga. A lot of it is what you would expect from a typical idol show. The characters grow closer together, they work hard, they follow their dreams, but the zombie aspect gives a layer of tragedy to their stories, giving their idol work more of a foundation, especially as you see them go after their second chance. I don't feel that the show ever lived up to the heights of the first two episodes, where it fully utilized the plan of its concept, but still, it was enjoyable throughout, even if it did end incomplete, which is why it's not higher on my list. Number 22, Revu Starlight. This show is an almost ordinary story with a surreal presentation to it, taking place at a school for stage performers. It is not an idol show per se, but it does feel a lot like one, though with the twist that the characters are actually fighting each other during the auditions. The battles added a lot to the show, letting it show the performances in a new way while letting it illustrate the friendship between the characters, even if the base story is kind of unremarkable. I've said before that I enjoy shows that try to do things differently, and that's something Revu certainly did, even if what it did differently was not that different, if that makes any sense. Number 21 is Darling in the Frogs. This is another fantastic show that I found to be just completely amazing. I love the relationship between Hero and Zero Two and the other characters too. But really, Hero and Zero Two with all the emotions, that was wonderful. Plus the whole mystery of the world, the many questions that were slowly unraveled. It's just so great. Not to mention some cool action that really delivered on the hype. All this came together in a battle which just floored me with its awesomeness. Then the show went past episode 15. I have a hard time figuring out how to rate a show like Darling because I really love the beginning. The first 15 episodes could easily be the top anime of the year for me. But then it went farther and it felt like it fell apart. Some of the parts near the end I did enjoy, even if not as much as before, though other things just, they messed up there. So yeah, from the fantastic start, I'll still say the show as a whole is good. And so I guess it deserves a spot near my top 20 of the year. Number 20, Sirius the Jaeger. This is a cool action show involving werewolves and vampires, and, well, it has a lot of cool action. Plus, it has ideas about revenge that the main character is after for his tribe being killed. And then you have a dynamic between the main character and his brother, which reminds me a lot of Satsuki and Itachi from Naruto, which that was really cool to see. Even if it is a bit different with how it does it, I will admit the show became less special as I got to the end, but I liked it all throughout, so overall, pretty solid. Number 19, Comic Girls. There are rare shows out there that are able to really connect to me in a way I can't fully explain. Comic Girls being one of these anime. It's a traditional cute girls doing cute things, with them making manga as the premise. Throughout the story, we see them learn from each other while also struggling and growing, though the focus is much more on the fun than the actual plot. The scene costs fail time and time again is really able to resonate with me. The story is very simple, but I kept wanting more from it. Plus, Subasa is great too, though you probably should not be surprised that I like a character who writes shonen manga, embodies what shonen manga is, and has blue hair. Number 18 is Planet With. This show is special. At first glance, it seems to be a mech anime about fighting off alien invaders. 
but we quickly see that the heroes are the bad guys, or so it seems. There are many different sides to the conflict, but none of them are villainous, which makes it very fascinating. In fact, this is probably the best show about good guys fighting good guys for what they believe in. Plus, the whole show is weird. Really weird. Very anime, though. Hard to describe, but and you will understand it only after you actually watch it. Number 17. A place further than the universe. Going on adventures. Doing crazy things. Enjoying life with friends. That is what the show is all about. It's a show that captured the anime community from the beginning and inspired them in a way that few others have done. There is just a sense of joy as these characters journey to Antarctica. And while the show did feel kind of ordinary at times for the concept, I think that might be sort of the point. I did not enjoy the show as much as some people, but I think this is a great illustration of the power of anime storytelling, and while it is not my favorite, it is one that I definitely recommend. Number 16 is Maho Shoujo Sight. This show is great. I don't care what the haters say about it. I have a fascination with dark magical girl shows, how they combine the innocent and ideals of magical girls and then smash it into a cruel reality, but often show that there is still a reason to hope. And this message of hope is what Maho Shoujo Sight is all about. These characters have terrible lives, but throughout the show they take the power that they have been given to make a better life. There's a ton of suspense in the show too, plus a fantastic villain that I just loved. And with everything taken to the extremes here, the ridiculous parts of the show worked. Sadly, it was left incomplete. Otherwise, it would be quite a bit higher on the list. But maybe we'll get a season two someday. Or maybe I should just go read the manga. Number 15, Please Take My Brother Away Season 2. Yes, this is an actual name of the show and not just me reacting to my brother bugging me while I record this. No, he actually did send me a message on Discord as I was recording. <laughs> I did not plan that when I script this video. This is a short comedy about a brother and a sister and is a lot of fun. The second season had more fun characters and actually might have had some development for the main guy as a person. Well, maybe. Or maybe I'm just overthinking it. Still, if you want a fun comedy and have a brother, watch this one. Especially if you have a brother, you'll definitely relate in some manner. Number 14. Bang Dream Pico. This is a short series based off the mobile game and full anime of the same name, though you honestly don't need to know much to appreciate this show. It's about the bands doing stuff, comedy ensures, and I'm pretty sure that the entire cast dies on at least one occasion. Either through getting lost in the mountains, skydiving, or getting lost in that one character's basement, I think it was. Trust me, it's weirder than it sounds. Number 13, Batman Ninja. Speaking of weirder than it sounds, we have a story where like Batman and Four Robins are teleported to feudal Japan where they have to fight villains like the Joker. Though, really, the plot is not the way to describe the show. But let me tell you how I think the movie was made. I think the Batman creators or owners or whoever were watching anime one day and thought it would be fun to make an anime out of Batman. But if they were going to do that, they would only get one shot. And so they would throw as much of what makes anime anime into it. That's why you have so many cool things in this movie, like why Batman is a ninja, kind of. But you also have giant mech battles, samurai sword battles, and just any other type of battle you could expect. This show is ridiculous. Do not take it seriously. But watch it and have fun. Number 12, Grand Blue. Again, another show that is a lot of fun, and I'd say it's the best pure comedy of the year. It's about a diving club and then them going diving. It's about other things too. A little bit of romantic comedy. A little bit of friendship. And well, other things. But trust me, this anime is about diving. Or so the fans of this series would tell you. And that is what I'm telling you. The show had some of the funniest scenes all year. And well, yes, there's not a plot. The comedy was good enough that this didn't matter. So go check it out and enjoy a show about diving. Number 11, Kokoku. Yes, the one with the awesome opening. But beyond the opening, this tells the story of a family wrapped up in a plot of an evil group who wants the power to stop time. There's a lot of suspense throughout the story where much of it takes place in a world where time is frozen. And I also liked how they show this dysfunctional family, how they love each other. That combined with the whole action suspense plot, and yeah, it was really good. Two things in particular stood out among any other anime I've seen. One of which being the villain's motivations, and also 
The Main Girl's Journey, which just set the show above the rest. Number 10, Beatless. Science fiction anime are very hit or miss for me. When a show is trying to be serious, I can't help but picking apart holes in the show's presentation of science, especially when technology is involved. But then it can also explore society in some really interesting ways. Beatless takes these interesting ideas and what does what anime does best, it presents it via waifus. Robot waifus to be exact. Making it a very weird blend of stupid and smart. Like they call the one company a meme frame. They knew what they were doing here. But then they present society and how people react to the growing amount of AI and automation as a way that I could definitely understand. And then they tie it back into our current society, the making the themes just really fascinating. The story itself was pretty interesting, like, like your guy being your typical naive protagonist, but having him see how foolish he was at times, that being a plot point to drive everything else. Plus, I liked how all of his other friends were involved with the bigger plot too. It wasn't just like friend A and friend B, they actually mattered to the story as a whole. This, I think, is probably one of the biggest surprises for me of the year, and one that I'm glad I checked out despite its less than stellar reception. After all, it made it to my top 10 list, and well, there's a lot of great anime that also made it. Number 9, Steins Gate Zero. It was so good to finally see this anime. I came into it hoping that it could take the franchise in a new direction, fix the problems I had with the original, while pushing the greatness of the series to new heights. It did some of those things, though I definitely have my share of issues. But despite these problems, when the show gets going, it was probably the best thriller of the year, and the time travel gave it a setting to work with like no other. There was so much great excitement, Okabe's journey becoming even better throughout it. So yeah, go check out my full review on this if you want to know more of my thoughts or my video for the 12 days, but suffice it to say, I'm a big fan of the series. Number 8. Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl, Senpai. As you probably know, this anime is not what it appears to be at first. It's not fan service, it's not a harem, well, kind of it is, but not really. It's instead a drama about the struggles of adolescence, with the twist being that the emotional trauma the characters face manifests itself through strange events happening in the world, like one character becoming invisible to everyone. I like seeing all the characters growing through their challenges, and Sakuta is just such a great main character. And he even has his own challenges too that intertwine with that of others. Plus Sakuta's dialogue, just amazing. It's hard not to like a show when I enjoy pretty much everything that the main character says. Number 7. Lost Song I've said before that I love anime that are different. You will notice with these top 10 that they're pretty much all un very unique in some way. They offer something I cannot get elsewhere in anime. With Lost Song, it's how the story is presented. It starts off as a standard fantasy adventure. A girl can perform magic by singing, and then there's a kingdom at war, and then these two stories intertwine. But while this seems simple, there's more to it than the first seems, which I'll just leave that there. This, along with a generally interesting story from beginning to end, is enough to earn it a spot in my top 10 of the year. Number 6, Gridman, also known as SSSS Gridman. How do I put the show into words? Because it might just be the most unique show on the list. Yeah, it looks like a traditional mech show. It's not. But there is something more to it. I think the best way to put it is that it is a trigger anime, and not just because they made it. And well, I like a good trigger anime, so hopefully that explains why I like this show. Number 5. Happy Sugar Life. So delightfully messed up. It's about a teenager who takes in a young girl that she loves, and she wants to make sure that no one takes her love away from her no matter what that means. Yeah, she's definitely a bit messed up, but she's far from the only messed up character in the show as they are all twisted in one way or another. There's so much great suspense with the show and horror depending on how you look at it, especially how they combine the very cute presentation at times with a very dark story. And I like how they have a villain protagonist here. It just makes the show so different, so fun. And I can't help but root for her even though she's doing bad things. Though I also root for the hero who's the antagonist, so that's just great. Plus it had so many twisted themes about love that were so great. Yeah, this show is great. I liked it quite a lot. Number four, FLCL seasons two and three. Well, I told you that my top 10 were very unique and I don't think you can get much more unique than FLCL. These two seasons lived up to the original quite well in that aspect. 
I like how FLCL tells a story filled with ridiculous things happening, but also telling a down-to-earth story about growing up. You have style, great music, and everything that is just Haruka, and this is a show very much worth watching, if only for the experience. Number three, My Hero Academia Season 3. Okay, so maybe this one is kind of less unique than the others in my top ten, but it's unique in how well it captures what I love about action shonen anime, or just like stories in general about heroes. This season had some amazing moments involving the battle with the League of Villains, which I've talked about that final battle here before, so go check that video out. The show also really delves into the question of what it means to be a hero, something that all the characters are learning throughout the series. There's also some interesting ideas looking at the villains too, and all these character stories are intertwining in a fantastic way. It's not the overall story or any individual story of a character that makes the show so great, it's how they all come together. Though if you know me, you might be surprised that it's only number three on my list and not higher. For one, it's not finished, therefore it cannot be number one. And then why is it not number two? Well, the number two show is awesome, we'll get to that in a moment, but I do feel that My Hero Academia wasn't quite as good in the season. It has its highs, but also had some weaker parts too. The basic formula for each arc has become predictable, and with the structure it feels like the only two types of arcs it can possibly do. There's also some filler for the show, which really did hurt it, and while this is less filler than other shonen, it's still an issue. I also felt that the first part of the licensing exam felt rather weak compared to the rest of the show, so yes, I am still a big fanboy of the show, but I don't feel it's quite worthy of the number two spot as it was the past two years. So speaking of number two, moving on to that one, it is Attack on Titan season three. The season of Attack on Titan was different, but very welcome. In a way, I'm kind of disappointed that they're moving away from the whole killing Titan focus thing, but I like the more human and drama focused the show is. It lets it grow beyond what it just started as. I also really like the look at humanity here. Some characters do evil things for the greater good, or other characters are doing what might be foolish things, but because they feel it's right. And those two dynamics together make the show really great. It may not have been quite as exciting as the other two seasons, but I watched the entire thing in less than 24 hours. So yeah, it's definitely my favorite of the year, but it can't be number one because it's incomplete. So let's move on to number one, and let's talk about the list as a whole for a minute. When I was figuring out what show was deserving for to be number one, there are a lot of different shows I tried, I gave a shot to. That's why it takes me so long to make this list, because I don't want to leave a good show off if it does deserve the top spot. Like, I never thought I would enjoy a beat list so much. Lost Song I overlooked until a friend kept bugging me to watch it. And who thought that Bunny Girl would be a top 10 of the year show? So yeah, it takes a while to get through all these. Plus, I mean, I haven't had time just for anime and YouTube. Life's been pretty busy. I've done a lot of travel for work. I'm keeping up with some family stuff and just... That life gets crazy at times. Not to mention my own changes in life and some stuff that might be going on there, which I need to go take care of soon. So yeah, March has been quite chaotic so far. It's like it fits that old saying. What was it again? Oh yeah, March comes in like a lion, which you know just so happens to also be the name of my number one anime of 2018. I've been planning that introduction for far too long, and I was going to be so mad if I found another show I like more. But I didn't. So why is March number one? Well, it's awesome. It tells the story of a young shogi player, Ray, and how he's able to overcome his painful past through the help of others around him. It's a slice-of-life sports anime, in a way, but it's so much more than what these genres normally mean. It explores all the different aspects of Ray's life, how they tie together, and on the sport end, it is like one piece of a greater story for all these characters, though it still ties them all together. And even at times, the different parts of the story don't fit together, which makes sense because of how life is. Ray is such a relatable character too, like, I can feel all his struggles. He might be one of the most relatable characters I've ever seen. Plus, all the other characters are so great too, especially when we get into those stories in Hina. And I like how Ray helps him, how they help Ray, how there's this intertwining of stories with each other. That one arc with Hino, which is just so powerful. The visuals are also some of the best in all anime. And by the end of the series, I had bonded with the characters in a way that's hard to describe. They did not feel just like anime characters. They felt like they were real people who I'd gotten to share life with for those 44 episodes. When I was figuring out what would be number one, it wasn't even close. 
So I hope that gives you a quick overview of why I like it so much and why I recommend it so much. Though there's a lot more I could say. I definitely could. So now I'm done with 2018 anime. It's time for Fate Khalid. Not even joking. Thank you so much for watching. And I, and I will see you again soon.